I am the Raining Raving Reviewer, and today we're going to be looking at the 2015 through 2022 Dodge Challenger. Back in 08, Dodge introduced the Challenger, and they were following the Mustang's retro muscle look. It came with the big 6.1 liter Hemi V8 and an automatic transmission. In 2009, they went a little more mainstream, adding on the 5.7 liter and 3.5 liter engines. And they also got a manual transmission option. In 2011, they switched over to the 392 Hemi and the Pentastar V6. Now, I'm not going to look at this generation of car because I've already done this review with the Dodge Magnum, and let's be honest, they're the exact same car. But in 2015, Dodge put the first facelift on the Challenger. Let's take a look. The platform itself remained the same, which guarantees it retains most of the same issues, most notably being a big fat bastard. We're talking full on chonker, 4,300 pounds worth of ass. It also inherited the monster suspension problems. You might not see them yet, but believe me when I say they're coming. Beyond that though, it's a super nice platform. Big, comfortable, and actually holds the road well for being so damn big. Engine wise, you're looking at the 392 Hemi, the 5.7 liter Hemi, and the 3.6 liter Pentastar. You also have the 700 horsepower 6.2 liter Hellcat, but I can't afford that one, so I have no thoughts on it besides damn. The 6.4 liter is rated at 485 horsepower and 475 pound-feet of torque. Impressive numbers to be sure. I love this motor. It's mostly problem-free when maintained. Sure, it's got 16 fucking spark plugs, and the Hemitech is still there, but those don't really hurt it. There are some instances of lifter and camshaft failure, but that has more to do with the wrong oil and not changing it enough. Having to use premium gas is soul crushing in this economy. The 5.7 liter is rated at 375 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque, which sounds great on paper until you realize that it's attached to a boat anchor of a car. If performance ain't your thing, it's a fine engine. It never feels lacking, but it doesn't feel special either. Something that bugs the shit out of me is the same damn engine makes 390 horsepower in the truck, which is completely ass backwards from what usually happens. Problems are the same as the 6.4 liter. Too damn many spark plugs, hemi tech, the end. The 3.6 liter Pentastar is rated at 305 horsepower and 268 pound-feet of torque, which is impressive for a six-banger. This engine had problems with head gasket failure when it was first released, but it improved massively as the years went on. They don't really have any issues. I'm anti-six cylinder when it comes to a muscle car. I don't feel it belongs there. That being said, you could do much worse than this engine. Mid 14 second quarter mile and nearly 30 miles to the gallon on the highway, and it's reliable. Not too bad. Transmission wise, you have the TR6060 6 speed manual or the ZF8 speed auto. I've talked about the 6060 before. It's as rock solid a transmission as you can find. Not you in cold, but no other complaints. The ZF8 speed is a gift from the car gods. It'd have to be to get me to buy one. Fast shifts, great miles per gallon, reliable as all hell. They can shift harsh when cold, and they had a programming error that led to a little bump when coming to a stop. But if maintained, they'll last forever. Now we're moving on to the interior. The seats are great, the center stack is well designed, four outstanding cup holders, and a huge trunk. There's still too much hard plastic, but nowhere near as bad as the previous gen, and it holds up better. Now for the bat. The most annoying problem these cars have. The dreaded Uconnect system. This thing does whatever the fuck it wants to. Sometimes it won't connect the phone. Sometimes drops the Android Auto for no damn reason. Can't control the phone ringer volume. Sometimes the touch screen refuses to work. Total steaming pile of dog shit. Then my personal favorite. It'll lock up and tune you into the tortured screams of a million lost souls in the bowels of electronic hell. And much like these souls, there's no escape for you. It can't be turned off. Not even by killing the engine and open the door. It must be powered by their anguish. 
All you can do is wait two or three minutes for it to reset. Dodge has been sued, and they've tried to fix it, but they've only made it worse. So what's the final verdict? It's a proud beast of a car. A bald eagle that drinks gasoline and shits freedom. It shoots the middle finger at every practical car out there. Is it overpriced? Yes. Does it have its problems? Yes. Is it worth it? Abso-fucking-lutely. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you enjoy these videos and you want to see more.